Welcome to iLecture Online. Because of some requests that we received on doing some more videos on heat transfer, especially in the cases where the difference in the temperature does not remain the same, we decided to do a few extras in that particular area. So what we're doing here is, in this example, we're trying to calculate the heat transferred from T1 to T2, knowing that T2 does not remain constant. T1 does, the temperature, the hot temperature stays at 100 degrees centigrade, but the cold temperature, the cold sink or the heat sink, rises in temperature as more and more heat is being transferred. It starts at 20 degrees centigrade, it then increases at a rate of 2 degrees per second until the two temperatures remain, are, uh, are equal to one another. So that would take about 40 seconds for T2 to reach 100 degrees. So how much heat has been transferred during that 40 second period? Some other information, the length of the path is 0.8 meters, the cross-sectional area is 0.1 meter, it's made out of copper, so the constant, the heat uh, conductivity constant is 385 watts per meter per Kelvin. Of course, Kelvin and centigrade degrees have the same size. The equation that we use is dQdt, the amount of heat per unit time being transferred, depends upon the heat conductivity constant, the cross-sectional area of the, of the path, the length of the path, and the difference in the temperature between the source and the sink. So in this case, we can say that the dQdt is going to be equal to Ka times the difference between T1 and T2 all divided by L. And of course, T2 can be now written in terms of 20, the initial temperature, plus 2 times T, 2 degrees for every second that's gone by. So this can now be written as dQ dt is equal to Ka times 100 minus T2 would be 20 minus, oh, plus 2T, like this, all divided by L. And if we then simplify that equation, that means dQ dt is equal to Ka times 100 minus 20, which is 80, and a minus times a plus would be minus 2t, all divided by L. And so what we want to do here is solve this equation for Q. That means we want to separate the variables. Let's come up here which means that we can write that dq is going to be equal to ka divided by l. And we're going to multiply that times what's left, which is 80 minus 2t uh, times dt. So we take the dt from here, move it up there. And now we're going to integrate both sides. We're going to integrate the left side, so that would be from 0 to q, the total heat being transferred. And here when we integrate this, it'll be from 0 to t, the total time that that takes place. Of course, it's going to be for t being 40 seconds. All right, let's go ahead and do the integrals now. So on the left side, we have q evaluated from 0 to q is equal to ka over l. And now we're going to integrate this part. It will be 80 times t minus 2t squared divided by 2 evaluated from time equal to 0 to 40 seconds because we know that we're going to do this for 40 seconds until the temperatures are equal. That means the total heat transfer Q is equal to Ka over L times, when we plug in the lower limit we get nothing, we plug in the over, upper limit of course the two scan slot that would be 80 times 40 minus 40 squared like this. So this would be Q is equal to Ka divided by L. 80 times 40 minus 40 squared, that would be, well, let's see here, that's 3200 minus 1600, that's 3200 minus 1600. So now we're plugging the values, so we get Q is equal to K, that's 385, times the cross section area, 0 0.1, divided by the length, 0 0.8, and this difference here would be 1600. And of course, the units, Q will be in joules, total heat transferred. Now, all we need is a calculator to figure out how, to, how much that was. 385 times 0.1 divided by 0 0.8 times 1600. And we get 77,000 joules. So let's see here, Q is equal to 77,000 joules, the total heat transferred 
during the 40 second period when the heat sink starts at 20 degrees centigrade so the difference is 80 until the heat sink reaches 100 that the difference is zero and of course at that point there's no longer any heat transfer but the total heat transfer during that time is 77,000 joules and that's how it's done.